So the next bit of content that we're reacting to is a Spectrum post, and this is from Jag, Jag Hiroshi. Weapons, components, flight changes, two years and no visible progress. It's a Spectrum post, and um, I thought it was an interesting one. Jag's been a follower of Mongol Squad for quite a while, and uh, he's always got a half-decent take when it comes to this sort of thing, so I thought I'd bring this to you know, everybody's attention. I kind of skimmed through it, so I have some of an idea of what it's about, but I haven't sat down, taken the time to read through it, analyze it, think about it, react to it. So here we go. When DIG flattened weapons and components back in 3.14, I found myself taking my foot off the gas with this game. It was clear that there was a bigger plan and this level playing field was just the first step along the way. So the changes were fine in that context. I think we all expected something as fundamental as this to shape up pretty quickly. After all, CRG wouldn't make such a drastic change unless it was part of a coherent plan. My aim was to re-engage after the changes were implemented. There were some problems with what we had before, mainly at the top end of PvP, mass driver error, etc. But we had variety. Sometimes other weapons worked in PvP, sometimes they didn't. But almost all were viable for e PvE, and the range of weapons catered for various gameplay styles and sci-fi power fantasies. The changes around 314 collapsed that down to a very narrow selection. More often than not, repeaters, all sharing the same stats. More often than not, FRX6 shields. And the rest don't really matter, distortionist resistance aside. It was a dull change, which I took to be tough medicine for the short term. Roll forward two years and we're still in that narrow, flattened space I've not, and I've not seen a hint that we're any further forward. We've also heard about changes for combat maneuvering in respect of master modes, which I'm hopeful will be a positive addition. When presented at CitizenCon, it appeared to be an advance in an advanced state as a working system, albeit focused on Squadron 42 vehicles. The majority of the outstanding work appeared to be transcribing the system across two Star Citizen ships. We're now heading towards CitizenCon again, and still no clearer as to the impact of this feature on Star Citizen ships. The the biggest question to my mind is whether CIG have cracked the relationship between light, medium and heavy fighters. Predominantly we're still very much in a light meta, assuming the Hornet thrust change is just an absolute balls up, with turreted heavies being the obvious exception. When I look back at Star Citizen, there were some moments where it was frustrating. The early 3.0 flight model was, in, was poor in particular, however the game felt much more exciting and far less predictable before 3.14. You'd see more exotic ships being effective, fighting in the skies over Yila, on the way down to Jump Town. Ballistic builds were viable, cannons were viable, sniping was a possibility, yes it can be fun. EMP felt like it meant something, etc, etc. There were more viable threats and more blades in the Swiss Army knife. Two years of waiting for placeholder mechanics to be replaced has sapped a lot of the joy out of this game for me, along with unfun additions like mobility kills for thrusted destruction which frankly is is about as welcome as licking a hot iron. It's amazing that the game has been coasting for so long in this department from a player perspective, leaving ships and combat in lackluster and monochrome state. Surely with core tech development struggling to, develop, uh, to deliver and professional development moving at a glacial pace, making flight and combat fun should be a priority. I'm genuinely confused as to why it's been left in this state. It feels like the idea was abandoned. I get that CIG have a considerable dislike like of addressing when questions but this has been outstanding for a long time and i think the patient backers deserve answers with at least roughly hewn time scales i'd like to know when i can put my foot back on the gas if ever p.s the state of tachyons it's a top post <laughs> legacy devs john pritchard flight model 2.6.3 control c and then right click <laughs> vehicle X vet flight model right click delete control v somebody who wants the old flight model back from the 2.6 hour see so for me to actually comment on this after reading through it um, because ETF have done tests with master modes so I can't really talk too much about what I know on that part. The frustrating part though and it's the crux of the point that he's making is like we don't know shit about what's going on with this. This change was put in two years ago and we don't know any more about what they're doing. We were only made aware of master modes at CitizenCon last year. We've had a few more updates 
on information, but it's minuscule in comparison to other things. And this is partially because of the content cadence that CIG has, and then what content that they'll actually put out. So the content that they'll actually put out is only relevant to stuff that's coming in the near term, which doesn't bode well when they make the changes then two years later, we're still not hearing anything more about the, the combat changes that they're planning on making for flight combat. Jag's seeking information. He wants to know, hey, CIG, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing with flight combat? Where are we at with flight combat? Unfortunately, the best answer that I can give at the moment is like ETF have done limited testing with master modes, which you could find out yourself by looking up the stasis and leaks. Outside of that, we know, fuck all. We're being treated like mushrooms, kept in the dark and fed shit. And he wants it to be more than what we've got now. Two years is a long time for us. For the devs, they're probably not even noticing because they're playing more advanced builds. They're playing builds where they're messing around with it the values change for them because they can change them they can change the characteristics of the ships of the weapons of the components however they want to do testing to see how it feels whereas we're stuck with the current systems that we've got we're gonna have to wait i'm gonna give it an upvote i'm gonna relink it so that we can get some more upvotes on it if you haven't read it yet it's already linked but i'm gonna link it again in case buddy some people's eyes are painted on and they haven't seen the link yet feel free to upvote it we want to know like i want to know where are we at with flight combat are we really gonna have to wait until citizen con to hear about it again why aren't we getting updates about it more regularly flight combat is actually a pretty big deal and sure it's concerning that we're not really hearing about it because cig's content cadence is based on things that are coming soon and because we're not hearing about flight combat changes it doesn't really inspire a lot of confidence that we're going to get any sort of changes or meaningful changes to flight combat soon adrian maybe i'm wrong but i feel people need to remember that their plan is essentially an extra to what was originally part promise squadron 42 just be happy we get to play along with development i would agree with that if cig stopped selling ships for star citizen after they hit their kickstarter goal their funding model is based on for the selling ships for star citizen not squadron 42 the book that the majority of the backer base is paid for has been star citizen so people wanting meaningful changes or me even just meaningful updates or just to be informed about the product that they've purchased that is in my mind something that cig should be considering as a worthwhile endeavor to pursue in order to maintain and keep their customer base engaged with their product that they make the most money from those are good points as well tell and when you think about it they don't want to be doubling up on the work and if they've been working on master modes for as long as they have been working on the changes for the components it's not going to be worthwhile to continue making changes in the persistent universe then again their active customer base is engaged with a product already and it would be beneficial for them to try and placate that active player base so maybe just making changes along the way just as a maintenance thing change something up revert back experiment but that's kind of the danger of being involved with a live product that hasn't been finished yet when you're creating another product that also needs to be finished yeah like the weapons components and flight changes we've we've had some flight change updates like I've seen information about it so we've heard something about that visible progress though from the backer side from the majority backer player base no visible progress understandable we have to wait for cig to really you know tell us but weapons and components it's like telling us what they're thinking what they're doing we also had the em missile changes i think uh, em missile changes at the start of 317 during ptu and then they reverted them and during 317's ptu em missiles were doing <laughs> distortion damage well yeah Raymond, it, it's one of those things where it, it's going to be interesting to see how CIG approaches these particular topics, whether or not they will to try and push the devs to make changes or you know like allocate funding because really that's what they're doing they're juggling funding and by juggling funding and allocating funding towards certain features within the uh, system universe they can kind of if they do it right they can increase sales but at the same time it also could be like you know, starfield starfield gets announced we see all the features that that game has and we're like holy shit and that's almost done and it's coming out soon a lot sooner than this one that we've been playing for years it's a different game but it's enough to keep some people entertained it's enough to get some people interested we're just gonna have to wait and see like chris roberts may just weather the storm and go you know we're just punching through this and we're just gonna get squadron 42 out the door and then focus on bringing the persistent universe up 100 agree with that ramon but yeah make sure you do upvote and show your support 
because I think this is something worthwhile. And make a comment on it too. Feel free to make a comment so that it bumps the post up and keeps it up. Show your support to Jag. I haven't written anything yet. I'll do one tomorrow. I'll make a contribution tomorrow. But for now, we're going to focus on moving on. I don't think we'll see any kind of changes in flight combat until Master Modes goes live, even until multiple iterations of Master Modes, in my opinion. You can't talk about the stuff that I've done with it yet. Well, actually, I can't talk about it even after you guys get it. Yeah, I agree. Like, I imagine that CRG is going to utilize the experimental mode in Arena Commander to help with testing. I don't think we're going to see Master Master modes go into the persistent universe for a while. We'll get it in Arena Commander's experimental mode first, just to test it out, get a feel for it. And I think what a likely possibility is that the player base will experience master modes and then just start screaming at CIG to put it into the PU. Arena Commander's sustainable funding model for Star Citizen going forward post Squadron 42 release needs to be on the table. Yeah, 100%. Like the microtransaction system was what CIG was always aiming for. But to be honest, if they want to bring in more money, stabilize your fucking product and start delivering on it which they're getting there but probably would help them a lot more if they could invest more of their developers and production into star citizen than what it's getting now which i think they're ramping up like the montreal studio starting up there was another one and tell that the other benefit of doing cig doing that as well is that those who are you know really invested in flight combat and wanting to know what's going on with the changes and experiencing those changes can engage in that and those who aren't interested in that sort of stuff can go off and they can fuck off and do whatever and CIG gets more succinct and concise data from those who are willing to test those feature sets which in my mind is a win-win for everyone Thank you, Jag, for your post asking CIG for more information and pointing out something that I don't think a lot of players have been paying attention to. 